we might be thinking about EVs, we may just be thinking we don't want one. And one of the reasons that we may be thinking we don't want one is because of all the headlines we get about EV fires. Now, EV fires do raise headlines because they make quite dramatic fires. They burn with an intense heat. They give off really nasty fumes and they're potentially challenging for the fire crews to deal with. Recently, the media have contained a lot of stories that EV batteries are not as prone to catch fire as your conventional internal combustion engine car. And I just thought I'd look at one of these statistics because it raised a question and it's just really my aim in this video to encourage you to analyze the statistics that are presented and try to get to the truth behind them. This was a headline in one of the broadsheet newspapers that we have here in the UK, and it stated that EVs are less likely to catch fire than internal combustion engine vehicles. They quoted the Bedfordshire Fire Brigade Service, who were reporting on a freedom of information request from one of the London fire services. And the statistics that came back was that, that 54 EVs had fires in 2019, and 1,898 fires happened on combustion engine vehicles. On the surface of it, it makes EV fires look much less likely. But that got me thinking, what is the actual percentage of EVs on the road? We're talking about 2019 figures. Things were very different back then. The EV sales ratios have certainly increased, probably not to how the lawmakers and manufacturers were anticipating, but they have increased over the years. It was unclear whether these statistics just related to the specific fire brigade area or they were national statistics. We're going to assume national statistics because if we go for a percentage overall of EVs versus internal combustion engine vehicles from 2019, it'll give us a ratio. Now, the ratio will not be correct if we're just talking about one borough, but the comparison of these ratios will be correct. It will give us a much more accurate picture. In 2019, the UK had 38.7 million registered vehicles. Of those, 269,000 were classed as ultra low emission vehicles, not just EVs, but ultra low emission vehicles. The government report that I cribbed this information from stated that in 2019, 39% of those ultra low emission vehicles were EVs. So now we can get a number of EVs registered in road use in the UK, not just new registrations, but registered for use in the UK. Taking these numbers, if you look at the internal combustion engine fires per vehicle, you've got a ratio of 0.0049. That's one in 20,000. 430 vehicles. For EVs, it was one in 1,943 vehicles, which is about 0.5% of the EVs had fire problems. So that would lead us to conclude that EVs are more prone to fire than internal combustion engines, despite the conclusion that was drawn from the original headline. But I have to concede the sample size for EV fires is substantially small. We can't make firm conclusions based on just 54 fires reported in 2019. We really do need to try and get some up-to-date modern figures. Another statistic, the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency reported that EV fires stand at 25 out of 100,000 vehicles, a much lower overall ratio compared to 1,530 fires per 100,000 internal combustion engine vehicles. It's fair to say that early EVs were an unknown quantity. Manufacturers were still developing their expertise. Nowadays, with more complex battery monitoring systems, closer management of the charge and the discharge cycles, manufacturers are able to build up a better picture as to which cells within the battery are likely to fail. Some manufacturers have issued recall notices. They've had a bad batch of batteries and rather than fix the problem, they are monitoring it. Power would be reduced if it monitored a fault. That would be flagged up. You would take the car into a service area and they would address the problem before the fire even happened. Manufacturers do not want to have to deal with EV fires. It's bad press. They're getting a lot of bad press at the moment. Dealing 
dealing with EV fires certainly presents a substantial challenge. The fumes it gives off, if cars are involved in accidents, the impact on the battery can degrade the cells, cause short circuits, cause it to overheat and trigger a fire. In the insurance repair world, there's a lot of concern about EVs and a lot of insurance companies have been hiking the premiums because of the additional complexities in dealing with them. EV repairers have instituted some kind of isolation and quarantine arrangement for EVs that have been involved in an accident just to prevent the risk of a potential fire. If it's there in close proximity to other cars, the fire is going to spread due to the excessive amounts of heat. Other fire brigades around the world have specialist equipment, containers that the vehicle can go inside that can seal any potential fire and restrict the emissions of these noxious fumes or these poisonous gases that EVs will release when they're burning. But let me know your thoughts on EVs. Do you think they are a bigger fire risk? Do you have statistics? Please point me to reports and statistics that are available out there. I've just really been looking at reports from our local area really in the UK and in Europe. It would be good to build up a picture of around the world because one of the big things that put people off is a concern about fires from EVs. What I'm going to do is put together a video that looks at the common myths and misunderstandings that are often out there in the press about EVs. There's certainly an agenda pushing EVs and there's another agenda that is very anti EVs. And it would just be useful to be able to read between the lines and come up with some definitive conclusions as to the facts containing EVs, the problems people experience and establishing whether certain commonly held beliefs are just myths or they are founded in reality as fact. I hope you found this video useful. Please boot the like button. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments and EVs in general as to whether you would be considering buying one or stubbornly never ever buy one. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We'd hate you to miss out on the great content we've got coming up. If you could boot the like button, that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video and this playlist up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.